We Shall Overcome, the story of a song, written by Debbie Levy, illustrated by Vanessa Bradley Newton. Back in slavery times, when enslaved people worked long days with no pay and no say, no freedom, no fairness, no choice, and no chance, the people sang. They suffered, yet they sang to soothe the hurt, to fight the cruelty, to declare that, yes, they were human beings. It took a war, the Civil War, to end slavery. But even after, white people treated black people as less than fully human, excluding them, ignoring them, blaming them, even attacking them, all because of the color of their skin. Black people were no longer slaves, it was true, but they were not truly free. Still, they believed things would get better. Still, they sang. It wasn't easy to believe. It wasn't easy when white people shut out African Americans from good jobs and good pay. Schools and libraries and neighborhoods Restaurants and hotels and bathrooms, train cars and bus seats, playgrounds and parks. But black Americans and some white Americans did believe they could overcome the unfairness, hate, and violence. They started to protest. They brought a church song, I Will Overcome, to the streets. But since they were marching and working together, they sang, We will overcome. We together will overcome. From the streets, the song reached the ears of city people, country people, followers, and leaders. It reached Martin Luther King, the most important leader working for justice for African Americans. He took the song with him in his heart everywhere he traveled. The words changed a little, but the spirit stayed the same. There were many forms of race hatred and many ways to fight it. Some students fought by sitting down in restaurants and asking to be served. They didn't ask for free food. They didn't want special service. They just wanted to buy a meal like any white person could. The students sat and sat waiting for hamburgers, donuts, and sodas that never came. The students sat and waited until they were arrested, and as they were taken away to jail, they sang. More and more, people decided to stand up for rights for African Americans. One small group, the Freedom Singers, traveled 50,000 miles in nine months to living rooms, concert halls, elementary schools, jails, high schools, and rallies, bringing We Shall Overcome to people in 40 states, inspiring them to believe that change was coming. The biggest gathering of people united in support of fairness for African Americans took place in the nation's capital. Marching toward the Lincoln Memorial, hundreds of thousands of people, black and white and young and old, joined hands, joined voices, and sang. Slowly, slowly, things were changing. Laws were passed, but race hatred stayed strong, even stronger than laws. So President Lyndon Johnson gave a speech. His ancestors once held slaves in Texas and Georgia. But President Johnson looked out at the millions of people watching him on television, spoke of equal rights, human rights, and voting rights for African Americans, and recited the words of the song. How could such a song stay in one country? It could not. We Shall Overcome sailed across the oceans to other countries where people faced injustice. It traveled to South Africa where black Africans embraced it as their own freedom song in their long struggle against 
an all-white government that treated them as outcasts in their own land. The song traveled to India, East Germany, South Korea, Czechoslovakia, Bangladesh, China, the Middle East, South America, wherever people worked for a better life. Even as it spread across the globe, the song never really left its American home. It took a very long time, but race hatred did grow weaker. Freedom grew stronger. President Lyndon Johnson was followed by another and another, another and another and another, and another and another, and then the people of the United States, black and white, and young and old elected an African-American man to be their president. On that day, people sang the song that so many voices had sung before in pain and in protest. On that day, they sang in happiness. Today, people still struggle against hatred and for freedom, against poverty and for fairness, against despair and for hope. We still sing. We sing to declare that, yes, we are all human beings deserving of respect, sharing the same planet, the same future together. The End